uh, comments made by the World Health Organization that were critical of China's strict COVID strategy and being censored on Chinese social media. Despite the rising economic and social cost of the strict policy and lockdowns, Beijing appears to be digging its heels in. Let's cross to our correspondent in Hong Kong, Britt Clenet. Britt, what did the WHO say and how were the comments received online? Well, you might remember early on in the pandemic, Laura, the WHO was criticised for tiptoeing around China on a number of fronts when it involved the pandemic. But this marks a certain shift. It's the first criticism of commentary that we've heard from the WHO. Let's take a listen to what the WHO chief had to say. When we talk about the zero um, COVID strategy, uh, we don't think that it's sustainable, considering the behavior of the virus now and what we anticipate uh, in the future. Uh, and especially uh, when we have now uh, a good knowledge, understanding of the virus, and when we have uh, good tools uh, to use, um, transiting into another strategy will be very uh, important. China called the comments irresponsible. But as you mentioned, Laura, some of the comments disappeared on Chinese social media. WeChat, one of the most popular social media platforms, that disabled some sharing functions for some of those posts online. So it really highlights the sensitivity around this. And, you know, you and I have spoken for weeks about the growing frustration in China, especially as more than 25 million people remain in lockdown, now entering a seventh week in Shanghai. Hong Kong's next leader, John Lee, has officially been selected after he ran unopposed. What does this mean for Hong Kong? Well, it's been called an election. You could call it a selection because he was the only one running. It uh, really represents 0.02% of Hong Kong's 7 million population. That's 1,500 people who voted in this so-called election. And already, Laura, last night, we saw another batch of arrests under the national security law Cardinal Joseph Zen, a very well-known, outspoken uh, activist and obviously man of the church. Uh, he was rounded up with several others uh, and he was released on bail pending an investigation. The Vatican spoke out saying it voiced a concern and, and is watching it closely, but again highlights that, you know, it, we're not necessarily heading in a more uh, relaxed environment under John Lee. He is the former security chief. He has vowed to introduce another security law on top of the existing one called Article 23, which was shelved in 2003 because of so much opposition. So there is a lot of fear that it is ushering in a new era and further crackdowns in Hong Kong. Yeah, elsewhere in Asia, in the Philippines, they've just had a new leader elected, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. And he appears to have a pretty unassailable lead in the polls with most votes counted. So he's the son of a former dictator. What could this mean for the country? He is, and, and he really has vowed to um, do the best for the Philippines. And he said, you know, judge me by my actions, not my ancestors. But there is a lot of fear because under his father, there was martial law in the Philippines and uh, there was a lot of corruption. There were a lot of human rights abuses. So this marks kind of a remarkable comeback for the Marcos family. But again, Marcos Jr. has has re kind of um, repainted, repackaged his father's presidency as a golden era for the Philippines and said that he will also bring in a new era of prosperity. Uh, so certainly a space to watch, Laura, and we'll be watching closely. Britt, thanks so much. We'll check in with you soon.